this is what it's all about. You know, we've been in this for 25, 26, 27 years. At the end of the day, there's no better feeling than sitting on that podium with the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And if you got a chance to do it, damn, we're going to give it our all. We all got a bit excited last week when the Eric Ten Hag news broke from ESPN that a deal had been finalised. Now we're hearing reports that it's effectively Eric Ten Hag and his list of demands and what the Glazers are willing to give him. It's turned into a Ten Hag versus the Glazers situation. I want to explain exactly why in this, what will be an information-packed video because there's so much going on, it's quite hard to understand and keep on top of it all. So please, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, it has helped you, please consider subscribing. I'll be back in my normal studio tomorrow after a few days away, but there's so much going on that I can't just ignore it. Now, Joel Glazer there at the start of the video explaining oh, how, you know, the best feeling in the world is holding that Vince Lombardi trophy. We know that the Glazers don't truly give a shit about Manchester United. They never have and they never will. And the sooner they leave the club, the better. But what we're hearing right now is effectively Eric Ten Hag demanding a long list of changes from Manchester United before he completely agrees to become Manchester United's new manager. Let's run through the story this morning. As I said, it started, it's coming from David Ornstein, coming from The Athletic, and he's saying that he, Ten Hag is close to deciding on Manchester United's offer. It says United have waited on Ten Hag's decision, although he is thought to be considering other options. Manchester United and the Premier League remain his most likely destination. It says that decision, The Athletic understands, is now close to being made. The Dutchman will want a range of assurances on areas such as his role, responsibilities, and authority stated clearly in the terms before accepting the position. And that is the big, big thing. We go down here and we read a little bit more on what David Ornstein had to say. And he said, if sufficient progress occurs in the coming days, it's possible that an announcement will follow soon. As things stand, nothing is closed and therefore the situation is live. So Ornstein pouring a little bit of cold water on what Mark Ogden and Rob Dawson said last week. You can't blame me for being excited. You can't blame anybody else for being excited. We want to see Eric Ten Hag come to United and instigate these changes. And to hear him making these demands, for me, it's exactly what I want to hear. A top-level coach will only join a club if the environment is correct. If the environment for success is there laid out in front of him, for him to walk into and actually make a difference at that club. At Manchester United, we know full well that doesn't really exist at the moment. If you look at the players that we've had over the last, well, a long time now. How many players have actually grown at the club? How many managers have fought against and swum upstream at the club? Eric Ten Hag doesn't want to be the latest victim of that situation. And that's why he's demanding these sorts of changes. And this isn't coming from just David Ornstein. Let's go over and see what Jason Burt is saying at The Telegraph. He's gone in and saying that RB Leipzig are trying to hijack Manchester United's move for Eric Ten Hag. He said Ten Hag's current club Ajax have also become irritated by the talk of him moving to Old Trafford. And we go over and we see that Mike Vavage, I still probably annihilate his name, sorry Mike, uh, from The Telegraph, considered the most reliable journalist when it comes to Eric Ten Hag news from the Dutch side. He's saying the same thing, that Leipzig have already delivered an excellent multiple year offer on the table for Ten Hag. That's what he's saying. So he goes, I suppose, a little bit step further. Now, with this Leipzig situation, for me, it seems effectively like it's pressure from Ten Hag's camp. All you've got to do is take a look at Leipzig's most recent results. Look at the form table. They're top of it. Last 10 games there, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins, two draws and one loss. And I, believe, I don't know who they are. That was against Bayern Munich. I, mean, I think it's understandable that you're losing against Bayern Munich. It seems like Ten Hag's camp are putting pressure on Manchester United from the other side. And so they should. I want them to put as much pressure on United as possible. We all want them to put as much pressure on United as possible. Because Ten Hag, for us all, seems like somebody who can come in and actually implement the change we need. We go on to read a bit more from Jason Burt in The Telegraph. He's saying that Telegraph Sport understands that Ten Hag has presented his terms to United last week after being told that the club were keen for him to become the next manager. Contrary to reports, however, the 52-year-old Dutchman is not demanding full control over transfers and has been irrigated, irrigated, irritated by the suggestions. He's definitely not been irrigated. That's something all different altogether. Having spent all of his coaching career working under a sporting director, it would be astonishing if Ten Hag was now demanding that degree of control. One more little snippet here from Jason Burt. He said, however, Ten Hag does want it made clear by United that he will have a significant saying in signings and departures. And also, crucially, that he will be given time to rebuild the United squad. 
He may also want to know what's going on with Ralph Ragnick. Now, as I said, I've been away for the last few days, so I haven't been able to keep completely and utterly on top of everything that's gone on. And I'll tell you what, it's just like Manchester United. It is all the time. It, it, it explodes everywhere. And there's a million stories coming from a million places. And it's very hard to keep on top of. So I understand your frustrations. If we're looking at what they're also saying out in Holland, they're saying the same thing. And uh, this is Freak Janssen, who I think writes for VINL, uh, which is uh, VI, uh, is that Void Ball International? I think it is up there with the Telegraph as a very reliable source out in Holland. This is what he's saying. He said, this week I spoke to several people, including Eric Ten Hag. My information is that the only way he will join Manchester United is when everything fits right. His management is working on it. He has a huge list of demands sporting wise. And this is what all Manchester United fans want to hear. If I'm being completely honest, it might be frustrating at this point that we seem to be going to and fro, but when you've got a man who's used to working in conditions like this, he's used to working at Ajax with Edwin van der Sar, a CEO, a football man, astute business master's degree, Ajax through and through. He knows what to do from, a, from running a football club as a business perspective. Then he had Mark Overmars, who was the man in charge of the overall recruitment, bringing in players, you know, in unison with Ten Hag, of course. But that's the sort of structure that he's used to working in because that is how modern football clubs work. Manchester United don't work like that. Manchester United haven't worked like that. We've never worked like that. We've worked in an autonomous environment when we had Sir Alex Ferguson who controlled the whole fucking thing. He was the man at the top. He controlled it all. And when he left, we, left, we, we lost the only man who was capable of doing that sort of thing on his own. And we now need to implement a new structure at Manchester United. That's what we started to do with John Murto coming in. I suppose with Darren Fletcher there. Hopefully with Ralph Randy going into the consultancy position. It's the, it's the, it's the, the blueprint, the framework is there. But Ten Hag wants more. And that for me is why I've been so vocal and adamant about the idea of Paul Mitchell coming to Manchester United. Currently, the sporting director of Monaco is believed that he's going to be sacked at the end of the year. But Paul Mitchell's worked with Ralph Rannick at RB Leipzig as head of recruitment, was responsible for the likes of Amadou Haidara and Christopher Nkunku coming in there. Go to Spurs with Deli Ali going there or Son going there or going to Southampton with Sadio Mane going there or Toby Alderweireld or Victor Wanyama. He's a man who is astute, understands his expertise. And that's the sort of thing that Ten Hag wants at Manchester United. And he should absolutely be demanding it at Manchester United because we need it at United. It's not just a case of someone like Eric Ten Hag coming in with an insane list of demands that's unreasonable, that can't be met, because his demands are effectively in line and in unison with what us as fans want for the club. We do want this change. We, we want to demand this change, but we as fans, we've tried and we, and we, we protested after the European Super League. We've got Liverpool game cancelled. Did the Glazers go anywhere? Did they fuck? And I'm sure we will, keep, we will keep trying it again, no doubt. But Eric Ten Hag is a man that can sort of instigate real change from the inside. Almost what us fans want to do. And that for me is, was a big reason why I always supported the idea of Ten Hag back in November, you remember. I said Ten Hag. And it's only got stronger and stronger and stronger. And this list of demand is not making me think that he's some sort of prima donna. This list of demand is showing me that he is an elite level coach that demands that a certain standards are met before he'll put his foot through the door. So it's effectively come down to this. It's effectively come down to Ten Hag and the Glazers in a bit of a square off. Ten Hag with his list of demands, which it's not outrageous. They should already be in place, so it shouldn't really be a long list of demands. All these, this, this structure should already exist at Manchester United, so it, his list of demands would be far shorter. It's just the fact that it's not, and it needs to be imp implemented. And the fact that he wants it, and I, I completely believe this is true, he wants it stated in terms, in writing, no, no, no verbals. Ten Hag's seen what happened to Mourinho. He's seen what happened to Van Gaal. He's seen what happened to every manager post-Fergie. And the broken promises, and the broken lines of communication... And the fact that he was left high and dry every single time, each manager. Ten Hag doesn't want that. He, at this point in time, he wants his career to go upwards. He wants to be on the upward trajectory. And for that to happen, he has to have a list of demands met. Whereas you've got the Glazers who don't want to relinquish that power. And I don't understand why they don't want to relinqu relinquish his power anymore. Seriously. Commercially, we've stagnated hugely. 
as a football club over the last five years. The, the fact that Manchester United were the, were the biggest commercial club in the world, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore. On the pitch, exploits are now affecting the value of the brand off the pitch. So if you really want to get into the horrible business talk, Ten Hag makes sense for the Glazers as well. Restructuring Manchester United makes sense for the Glazers as well. And that's why I hope genuinely that it will happen this time. Because the Glazers won't do anything at United until it suits them. Until they make more money. But because it's now really affecting their ability to do that, change is more likely to come. It's a horrible reality, but it's just a reality. But I wanted to do this video, as I said, there's a bit of um, a rounded update. These are the sorts of conversations we normally have on the live streams in the morning. I'm hoping to be back tomorrow morning, as long as I'm not too knackered after the flight back, uh, and get back to business as usual. But if you did like the video and it did help you understand everything that's going on with Ten Hag and United, where the stalemate is, I hope this video has helped. So please drop a like on it and subscribe if you're new. But as I said, I'm not upset, annoyed, angry at any of these demands that Ten Hag is doing. I want that list to be endless. I want him to make so many demands because if he comes into the club and he gets undermined, it's just going to be Mourinho v2. It's just going to be another manager. And I swear to God, if we get this decision wrong, this is the point where we can truly change as a club and actually start heading in a different direction. If we don't do it now, I think we're going to get closer to Liverpool Liverpool's 30 years than we are to winning the Premier League again. That's my opinion anyway. You can let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do. As I said, drop a like on the video and I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with the live streams. Take it easy.